Hi there, Gigi from the RBA. In a related video, we talked about how to measure the size of the economy using gross domestic product, or GDP. In this video, we're going to introduce some concepts that help us to think about how changes in people's spending behavior influence GDP. For example, when you decide to change how much you spend, how does this flow through to total GDP? To do this, we're going to discuss a concept called the expenditure multiplier. Now, the expenditure multiplier is an important idea for analyzing how money that is spent flows through the economy and ultimately impacts GDP and therefore economic growth. The expenditure multiplier means that one extra dollar spent in the economy can often translate to much more than a one dollar increase in GDP. Why is this? Well, as money flows through the economy, it's spent multiple times, and each time that it's spent, this makes a separate contribution to GDP. Let's think about this more with an example. Imagine we're a company that's building a wind farm. Now, we would need workers to help us build the wind farm, and we would have to pay their wages. Let's say we spent $10 million paying the wages of the workers over the course of building the wind farm. Now, these workers are going to spend some of their wages, right? Will they spend all of them at once? Maybe, but probably not. They'll probably save some of the money they received as wages as well. The amount that the workers spend versus the amount that they save is crucial for working out the contribution of that $10 million we spent to GDP. The share of the money that the workers spend is called their marginal propensity to consume, or MPC. This term's quite a mouthful, so let's simplify it a bit. The M for marginal means additional, the P for propensity means likely to do something, and the C for consume in this instance means to spend. So basically, the MPC tells us the additional dollars that are likely to be spent when some money is received. Turning back to our example, if our workers spend $8 million of their wages and then they save $2 million, their MPC would be 0.8. So that's the money spent, 8 million, divided by the total money received, 10 million. Right, so that's the first step. Where are we up to now? Well, we have $2 million of savings sitting in the bank accounts of the workers, and we have $8 million in the cash registers of the businesses where the wind farm workers spent their money. Let's imagine that these businesses now have to pay they, their workers and they pay them $8 million of wages. So these workers at the businesses will spend and save part of their wages as well. If we assume that they behave in a similar way to the workers at the wind farm, then their MPC is also 0.8. This would imply that they spend $6.4 million of their wages and save $1.6 million. You can see this on this slide. The cycle then continues over and over and over. I want you to notice a couple of things here. The first is that each time the money is spent, less is spent than in the previous round because some is saved. And the second is that we assume that the workers at the wind farm and the workers at the businesses both had the same MPC. So the next thing, how are we going to figure out how the original $10 million that was spent is going to impact GDP? Well, we could keep repeating the process we just went through over and over. And when the extra money that was spent got close to zero, we could add up all the amounts that were spent through each cycle, and this would give us the total increase in GDP, right? But this would take a long time. So fortunately for us, there's another way. If we know the MPC, we can calculate what's called an expenditure multiplier. This is the formula for the simple expenditure multiplier, which we'll call K. The formula is 1 divided by 1 minus the MPC. Now this gives you the same result as if you had gone through the process we did before and added all the amounts that were spent together. If you want to understand more about how this formula is derived, I would encourage you to Google an arithmetic series. But for our purposes, we can just know how to use the formula. So now we said our MPC was 0.8. If we put this into the formula, then we'll get an expenditure multiplier of 5. So now we're going to take this expenditure multiplier and we're going to multiply it together with the initial $10 million that was spent on the wages of the wind farm workers. This is going to give us the size of the increase in GDP, which is $50 million. So basically, the wages of the wind farm workers, the initial amount spent, that's $10 million, 
and the expenditure multiplier means that the impact of GDP is much larger than this, it's actually 50 million. The higher the MPC is, the larger the expenditure multiplier is, and the larger the increase in GDP will be from an increase in spending. This is a useful concept that can help you think about how changes in spending should flow through to the economy and can lead to a much larger increase in GDP. However, I want you to be aware that in the real world, measuring MPCs can be quite hard. The first issue is that, is that MPCs change all the time, depending on your circumstances and also where you receive the money from. For example, I imagine you probably don't save the same amount of every paycheck that you receive. Also, you might be more willing to spend money received as a gift or a prize as opposed to your wages. This makes it hard to know what your actual MPC would be for the next dollar that you receive. The second issue is that different kinds of spending have different multipliers. Money provided to businesses, households and governments will be spent in different ways and this means that the different components of GDP, consumption, investment, government spending and net exports, will have different multipliers. So the simple multiplier is a useful way to think about how changes in spending affect GDP, but in the real world, measuring multipliers can be a bit difficult. I want to finish by talking about how multipliers are used in real life. So during COVID-19, you might be aware of many policies put in place that help people that have faced disruptions to their income. Governments have provided money where incomes were lost, the Reserve Bank has reduced the cost of borrowing money, and commercial banks have given some borrowers temporary holidays from paying back their loans. This is a chart which shows how many billions of dollars the federal government has announced it will spend on some policies in response to COVID-19. The policies shown here, household transfers and subsidies for employment, both involve the government providing money directly to households and businesses. So how do policymakers, including those that advise the government, work out who to give the money to? And how do they estimate how much this is going to support the economy? Obviously, they want to give the money to those that need it the most, but they also need to consider the most effective way to spend the money to boost GDP, because that will also determine how many people are made better off by a particular policy. One piece of information that policymakers will consider is the expected expenditure multiplier from different policy options. All else equal, a higher expenditure multiplier from a policy will mean that more of the money that flows, flows through the economy, and this means that it's going to benefit many more people beyond those that it was initially given to. In contrast, if the government provides money to people who are likely to save much of it, then the, the multiplier of that spending will be low and the impact on the economy will be small. This is why policymakers in the government often encourage households and businesses to spend the money that they provide. So I'll leave it there for this video. The links to the relevant materials we discussed are in the description. We'll see you next time.